We are now ready to calculate probabilities using the central limit theorem. In this video we have an example here and I'm not only going to use the central limit theorem and make sure that we're allowed to use the central limit theorem but also I'm, I want to make sure that we can see the difference between when we use the central limit theorem and when we don't. So we want to suppose that the average resting heart rate for men over 19 years old is 70 beats per minute with a standard deviation of 80 or excuse me, with a standard deviation of 8. So I'm going to immediately write down what I know. I know the population mean in this case is 70, and I know the population standard deviation is 8. That's a good place to start. I am first asked to calculate the probability that a randomly selected male, 19 years or older, will have a resting heart rate of more than 83 beats per minute. Now when I read this, I'm reading this that I'm looking for the probability that a randomly selected male, 19 years or older, will have a resting heart rate of more than 83. I am not looking for a mean or an average. I'm just looking for an observation. I'm looking for a value if I randomly select one randomly selected male. So I'm going to draw my bell curve here. And I know on my bell curve in the, in the middle is going to be my mean. And I have an observation of 83 or more. So here's 83, and I want to know what is the probability or the percent, what percent of, we also could ask this, is what percent of males 19 years or older will have a resting heart rate. Well, this is just a problem that we've already seen before. What I need to do is to calculate the z-score associated with 83. I am talking about the population. I am selecting this individual from the population. So our z-score can be calculated 83 minus 70 divided by our standard deviation which is 8 and I'm going to write this out so 83 minus 70 is 13. 13 divided by 8 is 1.625 which we will round to 1.63. So this is my z-score if I look up the z-score on the chart, I will get the area to the left. So let's use our chart, open that up, and we're looking for a z-score of 1.63. Here is 1.6, and I want to go over to the third column, or excuse me, the fourth column. So 1.6 in the fourth column is 0.9484. 0 0.9484 0 0.9484 that's the area to the left I'm looking for the area to the right so I know I have to subtract this from 1 and when I get 1 minus 0 0.9484 I get 0 0.0516 so there is a probability of 0 0.0516 which if we converted this to a percentage it would be 5.16%. 5.16% of males have a resting heart rate more than 83. I knew I was going to be using a regular bell curve here with the population mean and the standard deviation was 8 because I'm talking about selecting this randomly this random individual from the population. Down below we're going to see it's a little different. A college is concerned about external stressors that might be causing their students to have an increased resting heart rate. But before they decide to hire someone to investigate that, they decide to take a sample of 75 students, male students, and they're looking at their average resting heart rate and whether or not that was unusual. The other keywords that signal we'll be using the central limit theorem is I'm looking for the probability that a sample of 75 male students would have a resting heart rate of 72. So I'm not looking for randomly selecting an individual from the population, but I want to know the relative position of a sample and if the mean has a rate of 72 or more. I'm still going to draw my bell curve, but what's going to be different, oops, sorry, what's going to be different about this bell curve is that it's going to have a different standard deviation. I am not talking about the population, I am talking about the sampling distribution. So I'm going to be looking at the sampling distribution. I know the sampling distribution when I consider the mean of the sampling distribution. 
We already know that that's equal to the population mean, which in this case is still 70, right? Up above, we know the mean is still 70. And so here's 70 right here in the middle of our sampling distribution. And I want to know about this observation of 72. So I want to know, is finding a mean of 72 unusual? Is it weird to have 72 given all the other means? Well, in order to answer this question, I need to calculate the z-score. I need to know how many standard deviations away is 72, an average or a mean of 72, from the mean of the means. Remember when we talk about a sampling distribution, the standard deviation is not the typical standard deviation of the population. But when we are looking at the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, we call that the standard error. That this right here is the standard error, and to calculate the standard error, we take the population standard deviation and we divide by the square root of our sample size. Our sample size was 75. So our standard error, which is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, is going to be our population standard deviation of 8. I'm going to divide that by the square root of 75, which if I do that, the square root of 75, actually I'm just going to write this in square root of 75, and now I'm going to divide these. So 8 divided by the square root of 75, I'm going to round this out a little bit, 0.92376. It's going to be helpful if we can write this number out a little bit. It would be best to keep it in this fraction form, this irrational form, but I know that's not always the best way to write numbers, so if we can just write it out, that's fine too. Just make sure to go out a few decimal points. So here's our standard error. That is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So I want to know the z-score. How far away is 72? So I'm going to do the regular z-score here. I'm going to find the total distance, right? Just like we would subtract the observation like we did above. Subtract the mean. We're going to subtract the observation that the average of the sample, we're going to subtract the sampling distribution mean, and we're going to divide by our standard error, which was 0.92376, which will be, let's see, 2 divided by 0.92376, it's going to be approximately 2.17. This is the z-score. This is the z-score that we found. When we look up that z-score on the z-score chart, let's see what we get. 2.17, here's 2.1, 7 is going to be all the way over here, 0 0.9850, 0 0.9850, that's the area to the left as we know, so I'm going to have to subtract that from 1, just like we would with any other problem, 1 minus 0.9850, we get 0 0.015. In other words, the probability is 0 0.015. We convert this to a percent. That's 1.5%. Is this unusual? Yes, this is unusual. Having a mean of 72, we have a percent chance of 1.5% chance. The reason why? Each standard deviation of is worth, in this case, 0.92376, the standard error. And the reason we're using that is because we want to know the relative position of this mean versus all the other means. Everything else is exactly the same as the previous problem. The only thing that's different is, since we're talking about a sampling distribution, we have to find our standard error. How did I know I was doing that? In the problem, we're looking at a sample of 75 students. I want to know whether or not the average was unusual. Those are key words that you should look for.